So you're here because you want to know how to take out an old radiator and install a lovely new one just like this on your heating system. Well, there's 10 steps that I've put together for you as a professional plumber for you to hopefully learn more about it. So let's get on with the video and get down to step number one. So the first thing you need to do is turn off the heating system. Turn off your oil boiler, turn off your gas boiler, turn off both if you've got both, in which case you do, you're an incredibly rich and fortunate person. So the first thing I'm gonna do is turn the heating system off, which means I have to go up into the Cathedral of Plumbing where all the electronics are. That was another opportunity for you to check out my calf muscles. So turn everything off, here you go, boom, boom, that's off. If you really, really want to, you can go down to your boiler and actually turn that off on the knob at the front as well. The reason we do that is because we do not want the boiler or the pump coming on, we don't want valves and all that uh, coming on. Although, I would say it's a good tip to open up and latch open, if you've got a two port valve or a three port valve, just open up and latch that open before you get to the next stage, which is draining down the heating system. <laughs> So then, usually for this sort of job, you're gonna need tools that cut floors. Uh, so we've got the Bosch GOP 18 volt 28. Obviously my impact driver, this is the GDX 18 volt 200C. <laughs> After that, obviously an absolute beast of a drill. Beautiful, absolute beast. It's one, I love it when you get a drill that when you, it sort of kicks when you're, you know, the power. The GSB 18 volt 150C, or as I like to call it, the drill. Uh, and then of course, oh mate, you guys have seen this in the last video I did when I was doing the uh, Corbett video. It's just the one you, oh, I'm gonna call this the Bosch bicep. Uh, but it's otherwise known as the GBH 18 volt 26F. Actually this light was just up in the background, but if you want to be a leprechaun, don't steal me but gold. And then very importantly, this is probably the most important tool, is my skill saw. Uh, this is the GKS uh, 18 volt 57 or as I call it, sorry. Of course, laser level, just comes with me everywhere now. And of course, my lovely thermal camera. There you go, so that's what we'll be using in this vid today. Go and spend money with reckless abandon over at our Amazon store and all this lot. Believe me, your wife will love you for it. Right, so the next thing you need to do is make sure that the water supply to the heating system is shut off. If you've got an F and E system, whereby you've got a tank in the loft, you're gonna to have to find that little tank. They're usually a like tiny little blank to black tank about yay, sort of big. There'll be a pipe out at the bottom of that. There'll be a valve on that pipe and you should be able to turn that valve off and then you're ready to move on to the next stage. If there isn't a valve, you're gonna to have to bung it or just turn the mains water off to the whole house. And then you can move on to this lovely stage, which is called the gorgeous orange hose stage. So what you need to do is find a drain off that's below the um, radiator that you want to work on. The radiator we're working on today is literally just up there. So here's a drain off down here. <coughs> a little bit dusty down there. Might have to have a word with Emily about Anybody? Dust. I would say as well, if you're going to get your hose out, try and put it out in the back garden. If you put it out the front, especially in London, something's going to happen. Put it out here. That's for splat the rat game I'm making for a mate's wedding. All right, I tell a lie. Emily's making it, as is obvious from the quality of the presents. Although this drain off is brand new and I fitted it next to my clean shoe, you never know what might happen. It might leak out some watery goo. That was pretty good actually, wasn't it? It's like Philip Larkin, that was. Bad. There we go. Water coming out, sweetheart. And if we go out shade, I might find that water's coming out of the hoosh peep. Look how clean that is. Seriously clean. You might ask why the why the hoosh paper is orange. Well, it's orange, so you don't want to look over it. Hey, haven't got my boots on. Haven't got me new boots of zippy sides made from the Calibri Sozzi, newest Aussie cow hides. Right, the next bit is that we have to vent the radiators that are upstairs and above the radiator that we're working on. Can you hear that glugging? I always try to go to the highest radiator in the air which is a bit annoying because obviously I'm only four feet tall and I can't see the top of it, can I? So now what we're gonna do is gonna open up these vents to allow air into these radiators and then that will go down and then that will drain out all the pipe work. Another little tip you might wanna do is just go around to all the radiators, make sure the TRVs are open and uh, also make sure that the lock shields are open as well. Why that? I mean, why would you do that? Oh, there we go. It's literally, that is the sound I make when I go into someone else's house to do a poo, like trying to be as quiet as possible. 
and then bleh, bleh, happens. If you've got a thermostatic radiator valve, like a Tado over here, obviously you don't want a signal to the whole system to come on. Even if it's switched off, it's just hassle. Best thing you can do is just slacken off the Tado bit on there like that, and then that's now open. Also, if you've got an Aladdin air vent like this one here, which is like an auto air vent, they'll do it themselves. You can undo that and that will start allowing air in. Or as I prefer to do, I just slacken them off because it's quicker. <laughs> now, one mistake I see people make on this sort of job is they'll vent down the radiator that they're working on and that's it. No, 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 don't do that. You need to do every radiator that's on the same level and above, all right? Otherwise, you're gonna come in for a little bit of a wet surprise. Uh, and so with the ceiling below. I've had some bad times, Max, draining down heat system. Cambridge, four-story office block. Didn't listen to my old man, I was an apprentice. He was like, I think you wanna take that automatic air vent we want to drain the whole system out before you take that automatic air vent off because actually that's what I was doing at the time. And I was like, no, nah, Dad, they got that little valve in them, haven't they, that jumps up. That would be all white. And he was like, oh, I don't think it will be, but I knew best, didn't I? Because I was 20 or whatever. I knew better than my old man who was 60-odd and had done it for donkey's years. Flooded four stories that day. Knackered a load of computers. Upset quite a lot of really quite fit birds as well. So, yeah, all in all, Pretty low point in my career. Another time I was uh, servicing someone's oil boiler. Very, very badly serviced one previously. And my hoover exploded <laughs> and blew black soot all over their lovely white E17-esque puffer jacket. So now what we do is we sit down and have a cup of coffee. This is like, the moment for a plumber that, you know when plasterers put a whole coat on and then they go and sit in the car for an hour or two and then come back every so often and just go, oh, I'm gonna go and sit down again. This is the same time for us plumbers. So you've laid down in the garden, you're wet now. Look, you can come back in here. First thing I'd do is just lightly, just get this a little slackening off. Just see if you've got any water in here. If you want to get out real quick, just let that off now and that'll come flying out. Well, I'll show you a little trick. You slacken off this one here at this end, just like so. You pop back in a little bit here, or if you just use the normal air vent, you tighten it up and shut it again. You know what, I think some of the worst plastering is behind here. And I actually paid for this plaster. To get your radiator, lift it off like that. Oh, this is bad, man, this is bad. And then you fold it down like that. See, did I tell you? Look, the plaster has left that. Bad, isn't it? And then you can just slacken these off. Shall I sell this radiator? I mean, this is quite a nice radiator, really, isn't it? Does anyone want to buy a radiator on eBay with two brackets rather than four? So there you go, the old radiators are off. It's always a good idea though now, just tip the water into the bath. Quite black to be fair. Some of you might be wondering how my old man's getting on by the way. Um, played golf with him last Thursday afternoon. Yeah, he's doing really, really well. He cheats at golf though, I'll tell you that now. So if you're watching, Dad, there was a time when you were three off the tee and somehow you got down to par four for six, mate. No way. It'll get well funny about that. Ah, look, it's still a bit of water there. Right, so a little tip for you, if there's a bit of water still coming out, first things first, just pop that down. That'll just stop it. Arrest its rate. Let's just pop that on here. It's because I forgot to do something. And that was open up the valve on the other side of the radiator that we're draining off on. So come on. So now, because we have got two pipes coming down here behind the wall, and we effectively drain out one of those pipes, because remember the radiator is just up there, but because I hadn't released that Tado valve down there, it had not drained out. Uh, and there we go. At 
this stage, if you're a cheapskate like me, and you're gonna use the same valves again, you might have to reuse or put a new olive on. Puttied, no leak. All you putty haters down there. I will also take the spigots out of the radiator as well, but you don't need to see that. Right, we're now at the unpacking radiator stage uh, and also sort of decisions about where your radiator is going to want to be. In a room like this, I would have the radiator underneath the center of the window. And look, someone's already made a mark there for the center of that. If you don't know how to measure the center of a window, don't watch any of this. You shouldn't be watching this video anyway. You shouldn't actually be allowed to even have a mobile phone if you don't have to do that sort of thing. Your education has been a complete failure. Um, so what we're going to do is we've got the radiator there, 800 by 450. If you need to work out the BTU for a new radiator, then there's loads of things online, BTU calculators, things like that, that you can use to, uh, to ascertain what you need. This room is incredibly well insulated and also because uh, I want my child to grow up in a hard environment, a harsh environment. Um, I'm never probably gonna turn this on. We'll leave the windows open the whole time. And in the summer, I'll shut them and turn this on. So this is gonna go about here, that's number one. So I can already say where I want the height of the radiator to be. And it's actually funny enough, <laughs> it's already been marked, it's here. It's that height there, just there, like that. In a minute, we'll use that tiny little mark there and the height of the radiator here to know exactly where our brackets are gonna be. Because obviously our brackets are lower than the height of the radiator and they're in different positions. So you just need to know that, but I've really got to get this radiator out. And uh, I think my standing knife is in the kitchen drawer for some reason. <coughs> Always cut down the back of the radiator for what I would have thought are quite obvious reasons. There you go, so there's your brackets. Also, you'll get a little pouch of endy bits and these little grommets that stop them from clicking when they're resting on the brackets and heating up. All right, grab your grommets, because they're gonna change slightly the height of your radiator valve, and you're gonna see your eye. Effectively, if you have the radiator off the wall this far, or you can have it off the wall kind of this distance, the further off the wall it is, effectively, I, I think, this hasn't been proved by science yet, and what's that nowadays anyway, uh, but I think that if you have it stepped off the wall a bit further, it gives it an opportunity to heat up more of the air at the back of the radiator, and it will give out a little bit more BTUs. But sometimes you just haven't got the depth for that, um, and it just looks poor. You know, There's a lot of reasons people do things in life, aren't there? And I don't really know the reason I'm gonna get this radiator to stick off like I am now. Who cares, it's YouTube, isn't it? It's not like you're gonna comment about it, is it? So I'm gonna step my radiator off that far. You can then measure the distance from the top here, and if you want, you can go to the bottom of the bracket or to the top of the bracket, but it's completely up to you. In this case, I think I'm gonna go to the bottom of the bracket. 45 mil, boy. I'm lining that up with the mark here where we know the top of the radiator is gonna be. Just make a small mark there. These marks will not be visible when you put the radiator up, regardless of whether you paint the wall up, we're gonna do in a minute or not. So center line. So the next thing we need to do is figure out how far apart our brackets need to be. Um, and if you look closely at the radiator, you'll see that we do have quite a lot of leeway as to where that is. But generally we wanna try and get it in the middle. And then you find out that the middle is a perfect 49, 490 millimeters. Now I know what 490 millimeters is divided by two. I'm just getting my phone out to check Instagram. But if you don't know what it is, oh, where's the calculator? <laughs> uh, thing is, right, I'd never trust myself to get it right. Two, four, five. So two, four, five, just on there, like the tiny little mark there in the wall, if you want to do it. Yeah, it's just on there, like so. Gromit, Wallace. Right, the boob lays on. There's our top line, and there's our two there, so we can just make a little mark on here and a mark on there. Right, please, this is a massive thing that people do and get wrong all the time. They do stuff like, they put this on the center, like that, or, or they go like that, there. No, this line is the correlation, right, between the, the bit that sticks out towards the radiator. So don't make that mistake. And then once you've got that on there, you can then mark up your holes, even though that one's, that one's actually already got one there. Now he is ready to do some drilling. So I've got the Bosch Professional GBH 18 volt 26F, or as I call it, 
the Thunderbolt. Um, actually, it's called a Bosch Hammer. Maybe I should just call it that. That's actually quite a good name. The bricks here are lime mortar, which ain't good. These are a nightmare to drill, believe me, but there we go. Switch to hammer. Now, fortunately, that one hit a full brick, <laughs> but sometimes they don't. Whip that out using the Bosch GDX18 200C. I was just loving the way everyone in the last video, thanks for all the comments by the way, guys. I was loving the way you lot all like, well, shall I go and buy some Bosch stuff now? Yes. Right, now we've got them in, we just want to make sure before I paint the back that um, all this goes on okay, that all is well. Bottom one first, like so. And then top one, just pop that in. Look at that, and then you've got that little bit of leeway either side. But that goes on beautifully. And you can't see any of the molecules that are on the, uh, on the wall as well. I mean, it's a nice dinky little radiator, but believe me, this will heat this room up perfectly. <laughs> now it's time to paint. Painting done. Let's get the radiator ready to hang on the wall because it isn't actually ready yet. Because if you need to tighten things up on the radiator, it's best to do that on the ground and not put any vast amounts of pressure on the brackets that you've just lovingly installed. So these are the old spigots. You might use new ones. You might be putting new valves on. So if you are, move on to the next stage. I'm going to be using Loctite on these threads because that's what I always do and that's what I'm taking off here. Quick reminder, you can get all of our stuff <laughs> on the Amazon still. Right, so I'm just gonna pop out here to a radiator. Right, so pop her on. Bottoms, then tops. And then what you wanna do is just make sure, just pull the bottom a little bit, just to make sure it's actually on. Little check with the bird light. Perfecto. So I'm just gonna pop this on this end now. So now we need to get the floor up. Sometimes you've gotta look and see, and get an idea as to which way the floor rafters go, because you're gonna try and saw up whatever you're sawing up on the centers of those. So you've got somewhere for, for there to be a little bit of something to have traffic weight on or whatever. So we've got a screw head here, screw head here, screw head there, and look, someone's drawn a pencil line across here. So there's definitely one there. Um, and then I'm gonna come back to, we're probably gonna have to pull up the floor to that there, okay? Rather than taking this whole piece up, We'll come back to about here and we'll just skill all the way across here and take this section up. So look, we're going down at small amounts, right? Just in case we, if we went really deep first up, it'd be bad. Then I just used the Boss Professional GOP 18 volt 28 to just finish off. Put some marks, yeah? So you know which way round the floor goes. What kind of hell are we gonna find under here, mate? Oh. Ooh. Right, let's get the Uber out, get cleared up, and get doing some pipe work. I've got a little bit of old pipe here, right? I'm just gonna cut it down, because it's old, roughly to the length. I mean, you could use this again if you really wanted to, if you were that way inclined. Of course you could. Um, but I'm gonna cut it down so we can use it as a voidicle, so we know exactly where to drill our holes. And also, I'm using these lovely bi-turbo, I mean, who made these? Who made them, Max, do you think? People, people are gonna start thinking something's going on here. But yeah, um, I'm going for quite a large size. Now look, that's how big the pipe is, that's how big the hole is. You're gonna go, well, that's overkill, mate. But no one's gonna fall down it, are they? Especially once Nick, the carpet man, comes in here and puts lovely spongy thick shag carpet on it. So look, you can just put that there, we'll just have it in the pipe a little bit. So you've got a rough idea as to where to actually drill your hole. It's such a big hole, it doesn't have to be bang on, but that's where one of them's gonna be. Now, a nice little chance for us to understand heating systems as well. 22 mil flow and return here, and obviously one goes down there. I imagine this another one tees off here. Well, I know it does. We've strangled down because <coughs> we've got a <coughs> radiator down there. It's two radiators being fed off 22 mil pipe rather than two radiators fed off 15 mil. Stop laughing, Max. <laughs>
Dane's here. If any of you have been to the trade shows and met us there, you remember Dane. He uh, looks like a uh, diver from the GB team. What's his name? Tom Daly. Tom Daly. You want to see him in a pair of budgie smugglers. Actually, no, you don't want to see that. So we've got the radiator on the wall, we've got the floor up, we've got holes going through, we've got the whole system drained out, we've even painted behind the wall. So now what we've got to do is just a lovely bit of pipe work. Cute, beautiful bit of B-roll. So many people are going to get triggered by this. I can't believe he's not using a heat mate. With these, just make sure you put a bit of extra in. It doesn't have to look like Instagram. It's, this is all about not leaking. Aldwin is done. Let's pop a bung in. I'm going to pop the bung in this end. I'm not going to pop the Aladdin beast back on for now. These seal up on rubber O-rings, so they don't need to be especially tight or anything. But obviously it's a good idea to give them a little nippage. And also when you put them on, just make sure the manufacturers haven't sort of somehow left the actual vent open, which could be catastrophic. Right then, let's go around and close out the vents. That looks lovely, that radiator, mate. It's not too hard at all, perfect. Right, so we're now getting ready to fill up again. A little bit of plumbing superstition coming up here. First, I'm gonna show you the good way of actually draining your hose out before you put it away, because you should have it drained out before you put it away. Especially if you're plumbing apprentices out there and you've left all the water in it and it's mid-January, it's gonna freeze, isn't it? But there is a bit of superstition with this. Don't put the hose away until you've filled up. It's the last thing you put in the van because if you put it in the van, there'll be a leak. What I always do to get rid of the water out of my hose, I do this, I start it up here, and I just hold that like that, and I hold that like that, and look, the water's coming out. Look at that. Better than blowing it. Now, we go up into the loft and start filling up the system again. I've got a pressurized system here, so I'm gonna open up the filling loop. You may find that you've got a pressurized system on a combi boiler, which means the filling loop is underneath usually, or elsewhere, get to know your system. Of course, if you've got a gravity-fed system with an F&E tank in the loft, you're gonna open that valve now, or you're gonna take out the bung that you put in the outlet of the F&E tank. Right, so I'm gonna fill up with my filling loop. I'm gonna turn that one on, and here we go. So I will fill this system up to one bar, okay? And then I'll vent everything out, and then I'll top it up again until all the radiators are fully vented. Then I'll top it up to one bar again, so it's just sat at one bar. Then I'll turn the heating system on then usually it's going to be about 20-30 minutes of jockeying air around to get the air out, but we'll see how it goes. I'll just pop it in there like that, just cocked open. Let's go downstairs and do some venting. Always smells funny, this does. It smells... I don't know, it smells like something I'm sort of really familiar with, but can't sort of put my finger on. Right, that one's full. And we've done this one first, just so we can test that all is well. And all is well. Right, I'm pumped up to one bar, so I can now turn all this lot back on again, unlatch any two port or three port valves that I've got latched open, and just wait for everything to sort of heat up, or well, wait for everything to come back on, like the Tado will take a few minutes uh, to come back up and run in. Um, and then it is a matter of turning the heating system on, which on a day like today, it's late August, it's about 26 degrees outside, um, isn't going to be the most popular thing I've ever done with my darling wife, but you can't make an omelette without breaking the old eggy wig sometimes. So um, yeah, so what we're going to do is jockey the air about, get it to the highest points, sit with the system. And the other reason as well we keep the floor up is to make sure that there's no smouldering fires or anything like that for a good half an hour to an hour after we've done any soldering. So let's go downstairs and find out whether we've got any heating swilling about once I've turned it on using the Tado app. I'm just going to pop open the old Tado app, boost heating in all the rooms. So they're now boosted. The heating should come on. And in a sec, hopefully, I'll be able to use my Bosch thermal camera to show to you, to prove to you that it's getting hot. Mate, have you seen how bright these are? This is the Bosch GLI 18 volt 1900. I'm the leprechaun. 
There we go. That's the corner of the radiator there. Getting wham already. Yeah. 39.3 and rising. Yeah, that one's getting hot down there. Might need a little vent at the top. Taking its time though, that one is. Ooh, wow, yeah, it's hot down there, 44. Coming through a treat. So I'm just gonna go around now and tighten up all my Tado stats so they're all back to where they need to be. Right, that's enough of that. I'm gonna turn off all the rooms. I'm gonna leave it like that, hopefully for another six weeks at least. <laughs> that probably ain't gonna happen because we live in the Northern Hemisphere in a country that is permanently freezing cold. Hey, look at that, heating up nicely. Sweet as a nut. Right, that beautiful stage, getting the floor down. One thing I'd recommend before you do this is just give the people out there a bit of a hand, a bit of a helping hand. Get yourself a Sharpie and just mark up roughly where your pipes are. So it's just a sort of indicative of the pure pain that they're gonna go through if they start chopping through the floor, stuff like that. I don't wanna be the dude who goes anywhere near that, okay? Sign it as well. You remember the pipes underneath the floor because I used a Sharpie. So then the job's all done. I'm sure you can't wait to see the finished article. For some reason, Max says it's a bit too high on the wall. Let's go and have a look. You can make up your own mind. See, what's wrong with that? Looks lovely, perfect height. So now click on this video here. It's all about a whole load of Tado thermostats that I installed at some lovely lady's house to update her heating system. I'm also using lots more lovely tools in that as well. Check it out, hit the sub and the like and sling your hook.